And so, watching Controller Roller's Let's Plays becomes almost frustrating, because the full experience of watching someone play a video game is lost, is not provided to you, and so you are left with a disappointing, frustrating, almost The other problem, I think, with controller rollers is that their style of commentary that they employ while they're playing the video games is not, I think, the best style associated with Let's Plays. So, the best Let's Players are able to bring their audience into the lounge room to actually become in a sort of intimacy, allowing these people in to talk about stuff that comes up, up randomly in their lives, to be friendly and jovial, and to just seem like you're sitting next to, you're sitting on the couch next to someone you know, a friend or a sibling, and you're just having a casual conversation with them about what's going on. And so, it feels organic and natural, it just flows through over the, it flows through the process of playing the video game, these interesting comedic commentary content naturally comes to mind and you say it. And so... It almost feels as if you're sitting on the couch next to these Let's Players and just having a casual conversation with them about the video game, about life, about whatever, with them in person. Too often, controller rollers seems to almost feel two steps removed from the audience, where they almost feel like stand-up comedians, where they're standing up on the stage and they're trying to do very things that are very entertaining in the hope of getting applauded or, or jeered or laughed at by the audience. And so the audience becomes a sort of passive receptacle in which you can measure or whether or not your content is funny, but you're not having a conversation with them. And so, the content, the commentary, and the jokes that you make have to be standalone entities that can exist as a bit, or a shtick, or a skit, in order so that the audience might be entertained by it in a sort of passive approve or disapprove manner. And I don't think that that's the right way for them to go about this. Obviously it was a huge problem when they were doing recordings just by themselves in the lounge room and then later they edited it and uploaded it onto YouTube. So now they're doing live streams where they actually can engage with the chat 
in real time through Twitch. Now, obviously, that is going to be a huge improvement, but I still think that in terms of their speaking style, what they talk about, how they talk about it, it needs to be more casual and general. They can't just place themselves in a situation where they have to constantly think about being entertaining in order to keep an audience's interest active, because then you just take on the persona of a failing stand-up comedian. You have to feel like you are just a friend, sitting on the couch, playing a game. If something interesting comes up, if you see something that's amusing, or you think of a joke, you say it. You might tell a story. But whatever it is, it needs to organically emerge out of playing the video game. It doesn't need to be entertaining for every minute of every... It doesn't need to be entertaining for every minute of every episode. There can be minute... There can be times where there's a lull because nothing is happening and you can't think of anything to say and that's okay. And you need to tell stories and tell jokes and make amusing commentary as though you were doing it to your friends on the couch. Don't worry about the camera that's in front of you. That's just going to distract you and make you think that you need to be become a performing monkey. Your best material is going to come out of you when you are more relaxed, when you're talking amongst your friends and when you think that the camera is not turned on. The other thing to say would be that the commentary should progress naturally with the course of the video game. Too often, when I'm watching controller rollers, they will make jokes which exist as standalone things, which only occupy that those 30 seconds or a minute of time, and then when the joke is over, they move on to the next thing. Or they might tell a story, and as soon as the story is over, they just have silence and then they move on to the next thing. And so, there becomes, there exists almost no element of time when they're doing their Let's Plays. There's no progression or evolution to how they think and feel about the world through the experience of playing this video game. So when you go to an average controller rollers video, especially for those longer ones that are two hours or 90 minutes or an hour long, you could go to any point in the timeline of the video and you would see content from the video game and you would hear commentary and the commentary could be listened to and understood regardless of what happened before in the Let's Play. And so the whole element of time, of actually going on a journey, is gone. And this just becomes a series of standalone miniature commentaries and jokes. And so the thing that can make Let's Play so addictive the fact that you can just pop it on and enjoy your progression and the story and the journey through an entire adventure of a video game is lost. Because if you 
lose a point, you can always come back at any point in the entire Let's Play and you'll still understand what's going on. And so the best Let's Players like GT Live, like Good Game Pocket, like Team Four Star, they are able to at least be able to make sure that there is a organic evolution to what they're saying and how they're saying it so that if you have to if you have to leave the let's play at any point you can't just come back at any point in the course of the let's play and re and recap and get a recap you have to go back to where you left off otherwise what happened afterwards won't make sense to you and so you are compelled to watch the entire let's play in order to take in the full scope of the commentary the way that people talked about certain subjects the way that certain things came up the way that certain jokes fell or were funny and so that's a reason why it's very difficult when you're watching controller rollers to actually be compelled when you have to leave and you can't watch it anymore to actually go back to where you left off there have been times where I have watched Outlast and Outlast 2 and I had to stop watching and I couldn't remember where I'd left off because it also sounds the same and so I can, couldn't remember the point at which I'd stopped watching this episode, and so I just randomly put my cursor somewhere on the timeline and started watching, and it didn't feel any different. And so that sort of organic connection to the live stream and the live streamers, and that when you actually feel invested in knowing what's happening and following along, just isn't there. And that's really frustrating for me because because I just can't feel myself compelled to follow along very closely to what controller rollers is doing because I can't feel like there's actually a point, a bigger picture point to me doing this. I don't feel.